You're watching In Focus. Uh, Kenya's fledgling cotton industry has been rising in recent months with a spike in world prices for cotton. But uh, the once flourishing business still has a lot of obstacles to overcome to increase the country's supply and modernize its cotton mills. Kathy Maitini has more on the challenges of Kenya's cotton industry. Business is brisk at Makaweni Gineries in Kenya's eastern province. But it wasn't always this way. Real estate agent David Masika purchased Makaweni Gineries 10 years ago. In the first year of operation, he sold 200 kilos of cotton. Last year, for the first time in a decade, Makaweni Gineries turned a profit, selling 600,000 kilos of cotton, or about 1,000 bales. When Masika first purchased the ginnery, his workers were using 1960s technology. Now, his ginnery is only one of four in the entire country that has modernized. And we got into this vicious circle where we then were wondering, do I completely modernize this thing when I don't know whether the cotton is coming? But I, about a year ago, as the cotton now started building up, you know, we have also started um, modernizing the ginnery. We have got half of the ginning machinery now. Masika's concerns about cotton supply and equipment are echoed all across Kenya's cotton and textile industries. The once vibrant cotton industry took a nosedive in the 1990s and is only now starting to get back on its feet. But it might be too little too late. Kenya is part of the United States African Growth and Opportunity Act, or AGOA, which provides duty-free and quota-free treatment for eligible apparel articles and other products. The aim is to strengthen African countries' economies by increasing access to U.S. markets. According to Kenyan government figures, apparel exports under AGOA have tripled from 2001 to 2006. But there is a requirement that countries must be able to source the raw materials for their products regionally by September 2012 or else lose their eligibility under AGOA. And that has Kenya's cotton and textiles industry in a panic. Micah Poen is Chief Executive Officer of the Regulatory Board Cotton Development Authority, or CODA. If an extension period of like uh, two, three years uh, by the AGOA, I confidently say that we'll be able to produce enough cotton uh, to meet our local demands to qualify for the AGOA market. Poen tells VOA the industry produced 30,000 bales of cotton last year. But the African Cotton and Textile Industries Federation says a more accurate figure is anywhere from 14,000 to 16,000 bales. Compounding the problem of low cotton supply and poor machinery is African countries' inability to turn their cotton into fabric and, ultimately, clothing. AGOA considers fabric to be a raw resource that must be sourced from other African countries under AGOA rather than being imported from places like China. Jaswinder Betty is chairman of the African Cotton and Textile Industries Federation. He says that a first step to producing fabric is for the Cotton Development Authority to broaden its focus. They need to have people on board who are from the full, full value chain, people in the apparel business, maybe one board seat, one for the textile millers, one for the spinners. Coda Chief Executive Officer Micah Poen says his agency's priorities at the moment are to set a fair payment to cotton farmers, produce high-quality cotton seed, and modernize facilities. If a farmer is given the right price, then he's, growing, he's going to grow cotton. If our generators are going to be efficient, we are going to increase um, the volumes that are produced within a given unit of kilowatt. As of mid-August, Poen, Betty and other industry officials were calling on Washington to extend AGOA's raw materials provision past the September 2012 deadline. Officials say they are confident that U.S. Congress will do so. Kathy Maitany for VOA News, Nairobi.